Hey, it's Blaylock1988. Um, I actually wanted to make this video to, to give some tips and tricks for installing Shrockworks sliders on a 2021 Bronco. Um, mine is a Badlands Sasquatch, so it has all the skid plates and everything. Uh, it was actually pretty challenging, but it's also easier than what Shrockworks instructions show. Um, so let me surround. So these are the sliders all fully installed. So I'm really happy with them. They stick out just a few inches. You can get, you know, most of your foot on there. Use it as a step. Um, and I added Expel, um, Expel tape here. It was like two and three quarter inch uh, door sill guard tape um, just to black it out. But the, uh, the, the, the trick with these sliders is if you don't have skid plates, it's pretty easy. But if you do have skid plates, you can see the uh, the trans transfer case skid plate uses a, it shares a bolt with the bottom. Um, one of the challenges with this thing is you have these stick nuts, and the stick nuts are pretty tricky to uh, get lined up. But so you can see you got the, the each each slider has two mounts. The forward driver mount has. Uh, bolt here and it has this this longer five inch bolt. So this this bolt uses a stick nut on the back side Which um, I fed through there's a hole I think right here So you can feed it through pretty easy. That's the easiest one on the back side you actually You send that bolt all the way through. Let me see if I can get the brightness You send that bolt all the way through and then they send you this big backer plate and then that side goes vertically and uh, that's so that's pretty much how the front mount goes. Um, you do have some brake lines and electrical stuff that you'll want to you'll want like a pry tool or something so you can pop these um these little supports out. I still need to zip tie a few things. Um, and then for the back, the back was oops, excuse me, that was a lot more tricky because so and the instructions say you need to remove. The lower control arm um, bolt which was incredibly difficult because there's a lot of tension on it pulling backwards so I get the brightness cooperate you actually don't need to do that um, what I found was I actually I jacked up the um, I jacked up the back of the Bronco I just put you know just lift it by the frame and then I'll uh, put a jack stand and then that gets this to droop just enough so you can actually sneak this bolt in there before it's um, before this is sent all the way forward so that's the first bolt you want to actually want to do on the back or at least for before you tighten everything down um, that one was really difficult as far as uh, as far as getting the stick nut on there because let's see if I can find the hole I used <sighs> There it is. So you can see, I had to use, um, I used this hole here. You can see part of the stick nut tail sticking out of there. Um, I had to use that. And, but what I actually had to do first was I had to take this stick nut. It's about, I don't know, it's like eight inches long. I had to sneak it through a hole on the back side that's a little bit bigger because it didn't fit through this hole. So you, you sneak it through that hole, tail in first, then you have the tail end come out here, and then you pull it through, you bend it up, and then you kind of rotate it. So you have, it takes a long time of bending and tweaking the stick nuts. And then you can send it back through, and I use a little little pair of needle nose um, uh, vice grips so I didn't lose it, because if you lose it in there, you're screwed. So you don't want that to fall into the frame. So I was able to get that, uh, the stick nut back here. It, you're literally sitting here for about 10 minutes just trying to very lightly thread that onto that stick nut. Uh, and then it was the same thing for this bolt too. Um, this side was definitely the hardest because there's not a lot of holes to work with. Um, whereas the passenger side is much easier. I'll show on that side. Yeah. 
It's actually still jacked up because I actually need to tighten down one of the, the lower shock mount bolts still. Um, but you can see here's the slider and fully installed. It's all tightened down and everything. Um, so on this side, you got more holes to work with. So, so this is the side. The other side I actually did take the lower control arm bolt out and you had to use ratchet straps to try to pull it forward and it was a nightmare. Uh, and then I tried it differently here and it worked. So you should definitely do it. Just jack it up like this, let the control arm droop, sneak the bolt in, slide the whole uh, slider forward because this, uh, this is an elongated hole here. And then I um, actually need to back up before you even, before you even put any of these bolts in, you actually want to sneak you have to sneak in the uh, the stick nuts first. So for this side, you might be able to do for the other side, I'm not sure, but this hole here is also elongated, it's big. So what I did was I put the tail end of both stick nuts uh, one at a time, fed it into here, bent it, and then pulled the, the stick nut arm out here, and then up here as well. Uh, so this one is this one's the, the bottom one, and this one's the top one. It doesn't really matter, as long as you're able to get um, get it flat with the mating surface there. So yeah, so I pulled that through, bent it up, and then tried to line it up, like kind of eyeball where I was gonna go for both of those. Then then I raised the, um, the whole uh, slider up using two floor jacks um, evenly. Uh, and then, like I said, I had it you have this back a little bit because it's actually it's actually slotted. Actually, you have to like slide it forward once you get it up there. So you sneak this bolt in, then you slide the whole thing forward, and then then you're you're good. You don't you don't need to remove this. Um, this bolt was actually really easy because the stick nut handle was just right there. So that's the passenger, um, and the, one of the reasons why they. Uh, well, in the directions they say you actually need to drop the fuel tank, um, but but you actually don't. Uh, the main reason why they say you have to drop the fuel tank is so that you can get this bolt out because because um, Ford uses really strange capture bolts where they have like a long angle so it doesn't spin. I don't, I don't know what you call it, but um, you essentially can't get this bolt out unless you drop the tank completely, uh, which is which would uh, be a nightmare. But, uh, so I did have to drop the tank a little bit. I had to loosen up about six of these bolts um, all the way around the fuel, t the front of the fuel tank. And it let this droop like, I don't know, an inch or two down. It was just enough so that you can, you can uh, slide the front end underneath this right here. Let's see if we get the brightness right. Um, thankfully, I was able to, yeah, I didn't need to cut anything. This was really close, but, um, uh, but yeah, so one thing that was a little scary is that the fuel tank, from what I can tell on the Badlands doesn't have tank straps. Like the skid plate is the strap from what I can tell. I could be wrong, but, um, so you had to lower it down to not only slide this in, um, but also, let's see if I can show, there's a bolt, just like on the driver's side. Mm. Uh, let's see if you can see that in there. You can see the shininess of it. Turn, crank that up. Mm. Can't really see it. So essentially, just like on the driver's side, there's a big backer plate, which you can kind of see is right here. So you, you can't really get those on there unless you have this down. It's just really hard to slip your hand in. Uh, so that's the second reason why you would have to lower the tank a little bit, but it was really easy um, Like I said, you just you, I had to take out the front maybe three or four and then loosen like two more uh, And then and then then everything just drooped just a little bit and it was it was much easier than I thought I thought it was I thought it was in over my head at first, but Since I didn't have to drop the tank and I didn't need to fully disconnect the lower control arms it makes installing this much easier than the instructions show. But, um, yeah, another note is it looks like the instructions that they used, or, um, the, 
the I guess the test vehicle that Shrockwick's used was not um, was either not a Badlands or it didn't have the uh, the bash plates um, because in the pictures from the first guy that got them done uh, he doesn't have like any of these brackets and stuff in the way so you know that that'll make it easier if you don't have either the transfer case skid plate or the factory gas tank skid plate um but uh so far i'm you know just finished but i'm uh, super satisfied um they seem pretty robust i was a little surprised they only had two um let's see if i can show they're they're super solid I don't know if I can if I can show that really well, but uh, yeah, like I said, I was I was really surprised that there were only two brackets to mount to the frame, but um, it seems solid. There's four bolts per side, um, and uh, I think I think pretty much anyone can can do this if you have a little bit of mechanical aptitude. Um, with these with these tips that, that I found. I might even reach out to Strockworks and ask them if they want to update their instructions, but we can begin. But yeah, overall, super happy with it. So I hope they find this uh, video helpful. And uh, um, I'll try to make some more Bronco content and also R32 content. If I still have my R32 over here and I'm actually working on a battery relocation for that right now um since the battery died it's something i want to do for a while so if you're here for r32 content hopefully I'll, i should have a video soon but it might be a month or two anyways peace